Welcome to the Home Downsizing Show. My name is Ben Socek, your host and the owner and founder of Home Downsizing Solutions. With the Home Downsizing Show, I want to provide you the information and resources to make the downsizing of your house stress and hassle-free. So sit back and enjoy the show. Thank you for joining us. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Home Downsizing Show. This is Ben Socek, the owner and founder of Home Downsizing Solutions, where we specialize in helping seniors and their families move and transition to a senior living community if they want to sell a house and make that transition to the senior living community. In this week's episode, I'd like to expand a little bit on the issue of things that a person can do to update their house for sale. Uh, As in a previous episode, I mentioned that that's a, a question that I get a lot and have for years and years is a person will ask, uh, what what should I, if I want to update a house and sell it traditionally, what do I need to do to sell a house? And as I previously mentioned, what I always tell people or what, what my opinion is on the subject anyway, is to either update everything or update nothing. But to expand a little bit on the if a person does want to uh, try to maximize the value of their house, uh, the the different things that a person really needs to look at is again is everything in the house. Uh, really, what any potential buyer would look at uh, in their house, because again, if a person doesn't update everything but they update just a few things then most potential buyers, when they look at the house, are going to wonder why only a few things were updated and why the rest weren't. Or if the updates that were done were kind of a, were were done in a a shortcut way to make them look like something better than what they really are. So starting with the, you know, the big things with a house, most buyers will always look at kitchens and bathrooms uh, first. What I've found anyway is that a lot of buyers will, uh, potential buyers will look at new homes and new home construction or really nicely updated homes when they're out looking and doing their home search. And so they'll see, you know, new kitchens, new bathrooms, the new kitchens with the new Stainless steel appliances is uh, has been the big thing for years. Uh, new uh, solid surface countertops, granite, or another nice high level uh, solid surface countertops for the kitchens and bathrooms. Uh, even in what I would term below median price or starter homes, you typically will always find solid surface countertops anymore. Uh, to not really will make a potential buyer question whether they want to spend the money to do it themselves or what sometimes or used to often happen is they will just go on to the next house and then look at the next one. But uh, so those couple items, uh, some nicer new uh, kitchen cabinets, uh, often with these low closed drawers, and uh, that's uh, an easy way that potential buyers will look to see if someone updating a house has kind of taken a, a less expensive or, or cheaper route to update kitchens is to not use the, the nicer slow closed drawers, cabinets, and, uh, and drawers. Um, depending on the type of appliances, of course, uh, you can get the the more inexpensive and cheaper entry level appliances, but potential buyers will will know uh, the different levels of uh, typically anyway will know the different levels of appliance packages 
that the stores and, and stores that sell appliances will sell. And so, again, if they've looked at new houses, new homes, or houses that have been upgraded very nicely, they'll typically be educated to what is the nicer quality of things and what's not. And um, again, I often hear a lot of sellers say, well, but buyers aren't buying a new house. They know that if they look at my house, they are not buying a new house. And although that's sometimes true, well, that's that's absolutely true that they're not looking at a brand new house, but for years and years, uh, literally decades at this point for me, uh, I will, I know that buyers, even though they're not looking at a new house, they do see some of the new, the, the, the homes that they're looking at that have been very nicely updated and they look just like new homes. They have the finishes just like new homes. And so depending on what type of a market you're in, the, the buyers are going to expect those types of finishes. Or <clears throat> again, they're going to expect some type of discount because your house doesn't have those types of finishes. Or they will just move on to the next house. Again, right now, we're still, depending on which part of the country you're in, we're still in a pretty good seller's market. And so buyers aren't being quite as picky as they could be in some other types of markets. But if we get back to uh, what I would term a normal market that we had uh, before a few years ago, then buyers can be much, much more picky about the house that they're looking at and whether it's, it's updated to the finish level that they are expecting or not. So the, the, the big thing, again, kitchens, bathrooms, kind of the same thing with the solid surface countertops, uh, the type of uh, shower and shower tub surround or, or how that has been updated or improved will make a, a difference. And then you have other cosmetic items, uh, such as, of course, paint and floor coverings. And again, I hear a lot of times a person will say, well, we just updated the carpet, you know, a few years ago. Uh, we put in uh, this this one, you know, the certain type of uh, wood, wood flooring-like product, uh, maybe in the kitchen and uh, in some of those rooms. But again, unless it looks new, I would tell you most potential buyers are going to expect that they're going to have to put in new carpet and floor covering again. Uh, some of the um, the wood floor like or look alike products that look like uh, look nice when they're new can very easily not look very nice within just a few short years. Uh, some of the products are pretty inexpensively made, and it's it's just very obvious after a few years that they're not as good of a product as if a person had put in real wood floors or some of the heavy heavy duty or more heavy duty uh, type of wood floors. And again, most buyers, and especially if they're represented with a good agent, will know the quality. A product that they're looking at and so people try and take the inexpensive route when updating things like flooring and it can it can really show very quickly so we have those things uh, something that years and years ago when I first started that I kind of skimped on because I didn't think it was a big deal things like lighting and replacing the uh, the switch plates the plug-in plates on the, the electrical type plates on the walls. And again, if a person doesn't replace those things, this is a, usually a much less expensive thing to do, but without replacing the lighting and some of the, and the switch plates and things like that so that they, they are new, it's very easy for a potential buyer to walk in 
especially if everything else has been updated. And and those things will just stick out uh, very easily. Uh, so when if you're going to update uh, the house to sell, certainly don't skimp on the inexpensive things like that. Uh, put new lighting in the house because that will modernize uh, the house. If a if a person has nice looking kitchen cabinets that can be painted or refinished, definitely put new hardware at least on those cabinets so that it will modernize uh, them. <clears throat> so those are the, some of the things for the interior interior of the house. And uh, of course, things like windows, the HVAC system will also be important items that uh, potential buyers will look at. If windows are original, if they're 20, 30 years old, then it's certainly something that most potential buyers are going to take into account. Uh, whether they're in good condition or not, they're probably not going to be as energy efficient as some of the better quality new windows will be. Uh, same with the HVAC system. If it's more than you know several years old, or, or certainly 10, 15, 20 years old, then certainly a new HVAC system will be much more energy efficient than that system. And again, most potential buyers will either look for a discount in the price of the house because of that, or they will just choose to move on. And of course, the exterior items, uh, exterior paint, the roof, uh, things like landscaping uh, are important. Uh, any concrete work, so the driveway, sidewalks, things like that are very important. Because even, uh, especially if the co if uh, the driveway or sidewalks have areas of raised concrete or broken concrete, sometimes, and especially roofs, if the roof is not in great shape, some of these things will cause the lender or the appraiser to let the lender know that these deficiencies are there. And depending on what the deficiency is, if it's critical enough, the lender will not make the loan to the buyer to get funding to buy that house until some of those deficiencies are improved or corrected. And so that's always something to look at as well, is even if a potential buyer might be willing to accept the house with the certain deficiencies. If a lender will not make a loan on the property or an insurance company will not provide insurance on a house because a roof is in a bad condition or not up to a certain condition that they require, then that can cause problems for that buyer actually being able to close on the, the property as well. So any of those things are important to look at. Uh, if a if a person does want to sell a house in a traditional manner and looking at that direction, it may be good to get a their own whole house inspection because uh, before you put the house on the market, so that you can maybe identify some of the items that uh, a potential buyer's whole house inspection will find, and that way you can address some of those issues before even putting the house on the market and running into those those problems or potential problems. So those are all the things, or those are a lot of the things that I recommend that a seller look at and address if they're going to go down the road of putting the house on the market to really look at everything that could or should be done to improve the house especially if they're looking to maximize things. And of course, after looking at all those things, it's always good to look at what it's going to cost to make all of those improvements. And it, not just in monetary terms, but do you have good connections with contractors that can do those items? Are you prepared to call two or three different contractors to get 
bids and quotes from them because they can be quite different. Uh, one contractor might be able to do the work in you know a certain number. Uh, another contractor might be charging one and a half to, to twice as much as what the other contractor would charge. And then of course you have to determine what which contractor can actually get the job done in a professional manner, in a timely manner, and do you want to be living in the house while all the, all those things are being done to the house? So, uh, getting finding the contractors, getting bids, having the improvements done, what all that's going to cost, and then when you go to sell the house, are you going to be able to recoup that amount of money that you just put into it? And of course, a lot of people that I've talked to said, you know, if I'm going to do all that work, I just as well stay in the house. And that, of course, is another option too, to uh, improve the house so that you can stay in the house a long time or, or longer than you plan to. But if your plan was to sell the house and, and downsize or move to some type of senior living arrangement, then that might be might kind of defeat the purpose of doing those updates and repairs. So these are just some of the things to think about if you do have a house that you're considering selling and not sure whether you should put it on the market, should improve the house, or or just sell the house in its current as-is condition. But if you are considering improving the house to maximize the value and don't mind looking for contractors and, and putting the investment into the property, I would encourage you too to go and look at uh, new houses, new house construction, as well as maybe a few houses that are on the market that have been improved so that you can get an idea of what others have done, uh, what your competition is if you put the house on the market. And so you can have an idea of what, what's there, what's out there, and what potential buyers are going to expect when they look at your house. So if you have any questions that we can help with, uh, just go to homedownsizing.com and uh, you can contact us through there or call my office uh, toll free 855-291-5005. If you'd like a free copy of my book, Home Downsizing Secrets, again, just go to homedownsizing.com to request a free book or call 855-291-5005. And I hope this episode of the Home Downsizing Show has been uh, informative and, and educational for you. So if I can help, please let us know. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Home Downsizing Show. For additional information and resources on home downsizing, just go to homedownsizingblueprint.com. That's homedownsizingblueprint.com. Or if you're ready to sell your house and downsize, just go to homedownsizingsolutions.com. That's homedownsizingsolutions.com. And if you have ideas, to improve our show or topics that you'd like us to cover or have any questions that we can answer, just call our office toll-free 855-291-5005. That's 855-291-5005. Thank you.